this is called a mental breakdown, if I'm not mistaken. This is a criminal offense. Some people have no will, no determination. This made me mad. I'm sorry to hear that. Hey guys, so for this video, it's going to be a bit different from my usual content on here, but I just really had to address this topic. Uh, so a couple of days ago, as I'm recording this video, I posted a video on my TikTok and it went like semi-viral, a little over a million views of where I cut my natural hair. When do you wanna come in? Bruh, just go bro, right now, hurry up. Oh, oh. Hold on, do it, yeah, yeah, oh my God. Daddy. Yeah. Wait. For context, it was like mid back length, and I decided to instead cut it really short and get a perm. And when I tell you the comments I had in my comment section were honestly not surprising because I know people have a very emotional reaction to natural hair and your journey and all that, which I understand, but at the same time, why are you concerned about what I do with my hair? It's not yours, you know? So here are some of the comments that I got. Someone said, this is called a mental breakdown, if I'm not mistaken. Someone also said that they had to vent. This is a criminal offense. Another user said that some people have no will, no determination. Okay. Why am I getting chest pains? It's not even my hair. I know, right? This made me mad. I'm sorry to hear that. Now, some of the other comments said that I should have like locked my hair instead, which is something I have considered, but that's something I will do like later on down the line, not right now. Another thing that was really interesting that I was seeing in the comments is that some people were saying that when they get their hair done, like in Africa, one of the countries in Africa, there is not a detangling fee. Whereas for stylists here in the US, America, it's different. It's an additional fee on top of that because it does require more work. I mean, I could have paid the detangling fee. It's not like I can't afford it, but it's just that anytime I get my hair detangled by someone else, it hurts. I am extremely tender headed. Now, before getting into my reasonings as to why I cut my hair, I just want to establish this first. I have never at any point hated my natural 4C hair. I loved it. I actually had to fight for my rights to even go natural. So I went natural when I was 13 years old and my mom was throwing a fit because I decided to go natural, which was crazy to me, but I was constantly advocating for myself, dealing with negative comments as a result of that because of my hair. However, it's kind of interesting because eventually when my hair was getting longer and longer, those negative comments suddenly became praise. Like it's almost as if when you're natural, when you have natural 4C hair, people don't find the value in it when it's short. But when it's long, oh, suddenly it's so beautiful. Now, here's how my hair looked before when it was natural. And here's how my hair looked once I got a perm. And with that being said, let me just get into all the other reasons as to why I decided to cut my hair and get a perm after 10 years of being natural. And previously, when I was a little kid, I had a perm. So a reason as to why I decided to cut my hair right then and there was because I woke up late on the day of my braiding hair appointment and I was supposed to wake up at like 6 a.m. and detangle my hair, but I woke up like an hour before it. And I was like, okay, I'm not gonna have time. I don't have time to really reschedule this. So let me just go ahead and cut my hair. And it's not like this was spontaneous. I actually planned on cutting my hair after I was done with those braids for like having them in for a month or two. So it was bound to happen whether or not it was sooner or later. So there's that. Also, I had a lot of people in my comments saying, why didn't you just detangle it? Why didn't you use hot water detangling solution and conditioner and all that? I have gone through over the years so many different products and most of them do not work to the extent of where detangling is not painful for me. When you have really long hair, really thick long hair, it is extremely painful when you're tender headed. So for me personally, I just could no longer tolerate having that pain. Another thing about detangling for me is that a couple of years ago in 2020, I had a biking accident. And so when I'm detangling my hair for an extended amount of time, it does, it puts a lot of strain on my shoulders and my neck, which is where my biking accident 
was I basically landed on the ground face first and still experiencing some after effects as a result of that. So by standing in the mirror for hours on end just to detangle my hair, it was putting even more of a strain on my body and I just couldn't do it. Another reason as to why is that when I'm styling my hair or just detangling it, I am using my hands a lot, which is exhausting for me because I already use my hands so much with my work. I work remotely as a content creator, constantly on my laptop, constantly on my phone, and I also play the flute. So that's like a lot of work going on there. So I just don't feel like adding on an extra outlet, if you will, to constantly manipulate my hands because it just... They start to lock up. Another reason is that I literally am always experimenting with my hair. If you have not seen my earlier content here on YouTube or TikTok, I'm constantly wearing different colors, different hairstyles, whatever it may be. So this is nothing new to me. I always wanted to cut my hair, try short pixie cuts and rock that style because for the longest when I, before I went natural, when I was a little kid and my mom would like force me to get perms, I had really short permed hair, basically the length of what it is now after I cut it and permed it. And at that time, I didn't like how my hair looked and I associated short hair with being unattractive and long hair with being more attractive. With that being said, there were several comments under my video that basically addressed this of where our community is obsessed with length. Someone called them the length lieutenants. <laughs> That's kind of funny. And again, I too was like this for the longest. I thought if I had short hair, I was ugly. Whereas if I had long hair, I was prettier. Even with me starting my natural hair journey when I was 13, it wasn't because, oh, I want to experience natural hair. It was more so I want to have long hair because when I met my best friend, she had been natural all her life and her hair was like waist length. That really inspired me. And as a result of seeing that, I was like, oh, Maybe that's how I can finally grow my hair out to be long like hers. And so my reasoning for being natural was because I wanted to have long hair, not so much for me to be natural in itself, if that makes sense. So after I realized that and after I stopped caring so much about length, I just decided to cut my hair and I was enjoying for a good couple of months, about three months actually, my hair being short. So when I posted that video on TikTok, it was actually three months after the fact. So I was enjoying my short little afro. And then I just decided to go ahead and permit because that was something I was planning on doing eventually anyways. I also want to talk about as to why we are so obsessed with having long hair in our community. And I think it stems from there being this misconception that if you have long natural hair, in particular type four hair, that it is not capable of being long, which is false. I guess this myth, this misconception stems from the fact that a lot of hair products that are made are not necessarily geared towards Black people. And so the certain ingredients in it don't really help with nourishing our hair and replenishing it as much as it would for different hair textures. I don't know, guys, feel free to leave more comments in the comment section down below on why you think we are so obsessed with length in our community. But moving on with this video, another reason as to why I decided to go ahead and cut my hair, get a perm, is because I have a puppy. I have a dog. He is 12 weeks old. I just got him a month ago. And he is so much work. If I spend just like 10, 20 minutes in front of my mirror in my bathroom, getting myself together, he is barking, he is peeing and pooping all over the floor. He wants to be played with, he wants to be petted. And so me spending an extended amount of time on my hair is not going to happen because if I spend too much time standing in that mirror, he's going to be biting on my ankles and I'm going to bleed and I don't like that. So I needed hair that was quick and easy and ready to go. So that was another reason as to why I decided to go ahead and cut and get a perm. Then there is also the fact that I am simply just too dang busy. I am a full-time content creator, business owner, about to start a second business, and I'm a student currently on a gap year, but I'm still doing some type of studying online courses outside of my university. So between work, studying, and raising basically a baby all at the same time, it is hard for me to manage my hair. And I had another person point this out in the comment section that they decided to just cut their natural hair as well because they're a mother and it was just too time consuming for them and stressful. So 
I'm not the only one here. And tying back to what I said earlier about length. So even though my hair was like really long, like mid back length, there was a lot of breakage and there were a lot of split ends. I, for the longest, was scared to even cut my hair, like cut the split ends off because again, I associated length with beauty. And so losing one inch was like devastating for me. And I'm not the only one in on this because so many people, like I remember in my old high school, there was this girl with extremely bad split ends. Like you could literally just clearly see it at any point in the day. And someone told her, oh, you got all these split ends. You should cut it. And she said, no, I can't because I don't want short hair but your hair is unhealthy. And even with getting layers on my hair, right? So when I would occasionally straighten my hair via a hot comb, like getting a press or just flat iron, when I was at the salon, the stylist would always ask, oh, do you want to get layers? And I was like, oh no, because I don't want to cut my hair shorter. So as you can see, again, an obsession with length, which at the end of the day, does not matter. See, it's almost as if a lot of people in our community think that it is impossible to grow our hair back once it is shortened. And that's not the case. Hair grows back. You just need to find the right routine for you, the right products for you. And I know it's hard because a lot of these products do not properly cater towards black hair, or for that matter, even some of these products that claim to be for black hair are not necessarily. Another explanation as to why is because I am always wearing protective styles anyways, like head scarves, headband wigs, braids, you name it. I just am not one who has enough patience or enough time to manipulate my hair day by day. I also want to mention how once I decided to get a perm later in my 20s and my mom saw my hair after previously being so against me going natural and wanting me to continue getting perms, she was like, why did you cut your hair? It was so beautiful, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm just like, wow, this is such a huge transition for her. But I just had to explain that I wanted to get a perm on my own terms. And I also hated how when I would go back to my childhood home and she would have pictures displayed of me when I was a kid, back when I had like my hair short and in a perm, I hated how I looked. Again, I was associating short hair with not being attractive. So I wanted to redefine for myself what beauty was. So I ended up cutting my hair, getting a perm, just to show myself that, hey, I too can still look pretty, even with my hair short, even if it's in a straight hair texture. It doesn't matter what texture it is. I'm still beautiful. So now that you all are no longer concerned about what I do with my hair, here's something that I hope you can redirect your energy to. So my content on here primarily focuses on scholarship advice and for context, a lot of Black women are getting their degrees now. However, at the same time, Black women owe the most in student loan debt. So if you do not want to be in student loan debt, if you are a student or planning to go back to school or know someone who is, feel free to check out all the content I have here on this channel and the resources linked in my bio description. So stop worrying about my hair and start getting that money. Okay. <laughs>